We have a lot to be thankful for here at New Mexico State Sports Weekly. It's another busy week and we have you covered. We have the highlights from the Aggie football game against ULM. Head coach Doug Martin will join us to recap senior day and also preview his team's season finale this weekend at Arkansas State. The Aggie volleyball team was at the WAC tournament in Bakersfield last week. Head coach Mike Jordan will join us to recap his team's play. With the annual Hotel Encanto Thanksgiving Classic this weekend, associate head coach Tamara Inouye will visit the studio to preview her women's basketball team's two games. Grab some turkey and pass the stuffing. Time now for a special Thanksgiving edition of New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Aggie up and happy Thanksgiving. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. I'm Adam Young. The final home football game of the season took place last Saturday when the Aggies battled ULM in Las Cruces. The Aggies rode the play of freshman running back Larry Rose III all afternoon. Rose had a record-setting day with over 200 yards rushing, but the Aggies failed to score in half number two and lost their sixth Sun Belt game of the season by the final of 30-17. to Let's take a look at the highlights from Saturday at Aggie Memorial Stadium. The Aggies taking on the Warhawks in their final regular season home game, which means it is senior day at Aggie Memorial. First quarter, opening drive of the ball game. Aggie defense getting it done early. ULM quarterback Pete Thomas is swallowed up by senior Jay Eakins for no gain. The Warhawks would later miss a field goal to keep the game scoreless. Next Warhawks possession, Thomas finds Rashawn Caesar and he weaves his way 45 yards inside the Aggies' five-yard line. However, the Warhawks would settle for a field goal to take a 3-0 lead. After a long punt return by Caesar, Centarius Donald plunges into the end zone from the one-yard line, and it's a 10-0 Warhawk lead. Quarter number two, first play from scrimmage in the quarter. Larry Rose III takes the handoff, and he sprints through a large hole. He rumbles 37 yards into the end zone. It's a Rose touchdown, and it's a 10-7 Warhawks lead. But ULM would strike back. Thomas again finds Caesar across the middle this time. He has a three-yard touchdown reception. The lead is now 17-10 ULM. Next Aggie possession. Rose the third again breaks tackles. He scampers 64 yards into the end zone. Larry ran for 229 in the afternoon. The game is tied at 17. The Aggies would trail by just three at halftime. Third quarter action. It was the Larry Rose show all afternoon. Here the freshman from Texas goes 47 yards. That gives the Aggies a first down. And it was a historic day for Rose, who is closing in on 1,000 for the season on the ground. However, with the Warhawks leading 20 to 17, Aggie quarterback Tyler Rogers fumbles on second and goal from the one inch line. ULM recovers to sway away all the momentum the Aggies had right there. The Aggies defense steps up one play later with an answer. Thomas, the quarterback for ULM, lobs a pass to his right, and he is picked off by Winston Rose, the senior. It is the senior's fifth interception of the season. What a year he is having. The score stays at 20 to 17. Special teams continue to haunt the Aggies. ULM's Alex Johnson comes up the middle untouched, and he blocks the punt. The ball is recovered by Mitch Lane, and he returns it one yard into the end zone. That's a touchdown, and it's now a 10-point Warhawks advantage. On into the fourth quarter. Rodgers trying to rally his team for a comeback, but the turnover bug bites again. Rodgers throws an interception. This time it is Trey Caldwell who makes a nice move to pick it off. Two turnovers in the game for the struggling Aggies offense. The Aggies and Jay Eakins force the Warhawks to fumble two plays later. The Aggies recover, but they are held on downs again on the next possession, and the game comes to a close. Final score, ULM 30, New Mexico State 17. The Aggies were shut out in the second half, and they fall on senior day. Taking a look at final stats, monster day on the ground with 229 of those yards coming from Larry Rose III. That total is good for seventh most in a single game in school history. It was the first 200-yard rushing game for the Aggies since 03. Larry is now just 35 away from 1,000 for the season. Despite the rushing differential, ULM outgains New Mexico State behind a strong performance through the air. 
and the Aggies fall to 2-9 with the loss. When we return, head football coach Doug Martin will join us in the studio. We'll recap the game against ULM and also look ahead to the season finale at Arkansas State. Stay tuned. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Welcome back to New Mexico State Sports Weekly. Your Aggie football team just wrapped up the final home game of the season last Saturday when ULM came to Las Cruces on Senior Day. Freshman running back Larry Rose III collected 229 yards on the ground, good for seventh most in school history, but the Warhawks pulled away late and picked up a 30-17 win. Joining me now to break down the game is head football coach Doug Martin. What a performance by Larry Rose III. One of the best individual performances you've seen in a while. Yeah, I thought he really played well, Adam. He uh, did a great job of making people miss. And you can see the speed that Larry possesses. He ran away from them several times. And, you know, I thought he grew up a Saturday. You know, he got banged up a little bit, had some bruises, got gassed a little bit, uh, but he didn't take himself out of the game. He stayed in there and hung in there, and that was a, a big maturing moment for him, I believe. Of all the freshman running backs you've coached during your career, where does Larry rank? Oh, he's got to be right up there in the best. You know, he's uh, got a very, very bright future. The, the nice thing about Larry is you know, he's a very unselfish young man, uh, just wants his team to win. He doesn't care about the individual awards, and he's a hard worker. You know, and he's going to be a guy that's going to have 10 or 15 pounds on him again next year, be a much bigger, stronger running back. So our fans are going to have a lot of fun watching him over the next three years. It was a really tight game, especially in the first half, a three-point game at halftime but you were shut out in half number two. What changed from half one to half two? Well, the turnovers again, you know, we got down on the one yard line and didn't score and that was pivotal. We were getting ready to take the lead 24-17 uh, uh, at that time or 24-20 at that time and uh, tried to quarterback sneak and lost the football there. And then our defense came out, made a great play and got an interception mm -hmm. for us the very next play. And so we had the ball in the 30 going in and didn't get any points. And, and that's kind of been our Achilles heel all year is our offense being able to produce points at, at critical times. So I thought defensively we probably played our best football game of the year. Was it just those two plays or were the other plays that really swayed the momentum away from you guys? You know, I think just those two plays, I think those two series right there of not getting any points at that time was, uh, was hard to overcome. And then of course, you know, the block punt, uh, which that, that just can't happen. And uh, you know, that was a big, big moment in the game also. The final score was 30-17, but do you feel like you're within striking distance the entire game? I, I do, Adam, and I feel like, you know, when I look at these Sunbelt teams talent-wise, when I, when I watch them, the only team that I feel like that is head and shoulders above us right now is Lafayette. Mm -hmm. we, we've got some work to do to catch up with them in recruiting. Uh, but the other Sunbelt teams, I really believe with this next recruiting class, we can catch everybody in this conference as far as the talent level, getting our scholarship numbers back, and being a, a team that can win this conference. Do you feel like the final score was a little deceiving because of how well your defense played in the game? Yeah, I don't think there's any question. Our defense really only gave up 17 points yeah. in that we gave up a long punt return. Um, you know, obviously we're on our second and third punter now, uh, and we didn't get a very good punt, and they returned that, and then the, the block punt. So, you know, that was 14 points where our defense really had nothing to do with. So we're, we're making a lot of progress, and I know it's frustrating for our fans. It's frustrating for me that we're not winning as many games as we should right now, but there's a lot of positive things going on here, and our wins are going to be coming next year. When we come back, Coach and I will discuss the final game of this season for his Aggies when they head to Arkansas for an afternoon conference game against the Arkansas State Red Wolves on Saturday. Stay tuned. This is New Mexico State Sports Weekly. With one final game before the end of the season, the Aggie football team is looking to finish off 2014 on a high note. The Aggies will head to Jonesboro, Arkansas this weekend to take on Arkansas State. Head coach Doug Martin is with me in studio. Your focus now turns to the Red Wolves. They've lost two straight games now. How tough will this final game be? Well, it's going to be a hard game. Arkansas State has uh, co-champions of the Sun Belt from last year. Uh, it's a team that's used to winning, mm -hmm. and they've got a winning season for this year. So very talented football team, uh, much like uh, Monroe, about, about on that same level, I believe. Uh, but they've got a really good team, uh, team speed. They've got a very good defensive football team. And Jonesboro is a hard place to play at. Two straight losses, though, for Arkansas State. What have you seen from them as of late? Well, I think they're giving up a lot of points here the last couple of games. Appalachia State was able to score 30-something on them, and, and that's where we've got to get to, Adam. We've got to get to where we're scoring points, and like I said, especially at critical times. Uh, if we can get that done, then we'll be right there at the end you know, to win this football game. Arkansas State, the three-time defending Sun Belt champions. Do you pay close attention to their program 
to see how they got there? I, I do. There's certain programs that I look at uh, that have not been typically great programs with tradition that have turned into great programs. Arkansas State is one of those. Uh, Monroe is one of those. Lafayette's one of those. So, you know, there's all sorts of programs in this conference that have come from where we are and become one of the better teams in this conference. And we can do the same thing, and, and we will get the same thing done. What has helped them sustain success year after year? Yeah, I think they've obviously made a big commitment to facilities. They've upgraded their facilities dramatically from what they've been over the years. Uh, their coaches' salaries are, are very high. I think mm -hmm. they're one of the best in the Sun Belt. So they're able to attract the very best assistant coaches they can get. Uh, and assistant coach-wise, they've managed to keep most of those guys. They've had a lot of turnover as a head coach over the last five years, but a lot of those assistants have stayed there. You mentioned facilities. Where does your facility rank among the league? Well, I got to believe that we're uh, up and close to the tops of the Sun Belt. I believe we're in the top third when you look at our new weight room and the new field and uh, the Fulton Center, who's a, an excellent mm -hmm. facility anyway. Our coaches' offices are very nice. We've got about everything we need right now. There's some things we'd like to do in the stadium down the road. Uh, I know the press box is an issue we'd like to get updated at some time. Uh, but facility-wise, uh, I think we're right there with the best of them. Final game of this season. What's your message to your players this week? Well, that this is the most important game we played all year. You know, this is our seniors' last chance to play a football game. A lot of these guys will never play another football game. Uh, and we need to stop this losing streak. We need to get rid of this thing so we can move into next year, move into recruiting. Uh, and, and this is a character game for our football team. We've got to go out and play. We've played hard every week, but we've got to go out and play and win the football game, get this monkey off our back. So there's a pride factor here. There's weekend. absolutely a pride factor. There's a character factor. And, and just us moving forward as a football program. Coach, your keys to a win Saturday? Well, it's taking care of the ball. Again, you know, we, we had two turnovers again Saturday, which is cut down from what we've been having, but there's still too many. And then it's scoring points. And, you know, we've got to get 30 points on the board uh, and give our defense a chance to go out and play. It's the Aggies and the Red Wolves this Saturday in Jonesboro, Arkansas. New Mexico State looks to finish off this season with a victory, and kickoff is set for 1 p.m. Coach, best of luck this weekend. Thank you, Adam. When we return, we'll be joined by head volleyball coach Mike Jordan. His team just returned from the WAC tournament in Bakersfield, California. The Aggies were looking for their third straight WAC championship. Coach and I will break down the tourney when we come back on New Mexico State Sports Weekly. The New Mexico State volleyball team is back in Las Cruces after playing in the WAC tournament last weekend in Bakersfield. With a two seed in the tournament, the Aggies are to buy into the semifinals. Looking for their third straight conference championship, the Aggies received strong play from freshman Jordan Abalos, but fell to host and eventual champion Bakersfield in the semis. Here with me now in studio is head volleyball coach Mike Jordan. Coach, what do you feel like prevented you from winning that tight match on Friday? Well, the injuries didn't help, obviously. Um, <clears throat> both times we had beaten Bakersfield during the year, we had uh, Sasha uh, in the middle, and Sasha's been out for a month now with the ACL, and uh, that's played some people out of position. And we started off pretty well, uh, and then Natalie got hurt in the second set, and you lose an all-conference performer um, at crunch time, and it's a little tough to overcome, especially with a young team like we had. So. It was a combination of things, a Bakersfield team that obviously I don't want to take anything away from them that played yeah. very well and uh, was very hungry to win on their home court and that combination of things did us in. Bakersfield goes on to win the championship match the next day in three sets pretty yeah. easily against Seattle. Does that make it sting a little bit more? <laughs> well, not winning it period uh, makes it sting. You know, we're, we're accustomed to getting to the NSA tournament. When you don't, it's, it's tough to swallow. But uh, we had our chances, and, and even with all the injuries, we were still physical enough and uh, had opportunities to get it done. It just didn't happen for us. Uh, whoever, if we had won a semifinal match, whoever we had played in the final, uh, I feel like we had a decent shot against, and it uh, just didn't materialize the way we wanted. Freshman Jordan Abelos was outstanding against Bakersfield. You had a lot of freshmen step up this year. Yeah. How good can that freshman class be down the road? Well, they've got unlimited potential. They're uh, tremendous athletes. They're just not very skilled volleyball players yet. And as time goes, especially with spring practice, we're going to see them continue to, to develop and make more and more plays. Jordan had her best match of the season offensively uh, and quite a few good matches down the stretch and uh, did things that she wasn't capable of doing two, three months ago. Uh, by the end of spring practice, we're hopeful that she's as uh, uh, polished as we can possibly make her. And I think the, the entire class is uh, loaded with talent. They should do very, very well. We'll see. 
were there any individuals that really stepped up down the road at, towards the end of this season that you feel like gained some momentum going into the offseason? Well, Ashlyn Brown at the setting position really did some nice things for us. She struggled with her, her left side location, but uh, her location to the middle has improved. She was great to the right, and that allowed Natalie to, to have the season she had. I, I love the work ethic of this team. I think they, they practice hard. They, they run around. They, they sacrifice their body. Uh, they do a lot of things that you want your team to do. It's fun to coach them in that respect. I think the one thing that all of them need uh, is to be a little bit better uh, paying attention to detail, mm -hmm. maybe having a focus on what it is they want. Uh, but I, I like the, the potential of them, and people like Natalie down the stretch did a great job for us. Uh, Gwen Murphy picked it up the last week and, and made some plays. We've got a lot of talent returning at them, and, and I'm hopeful we'll have another great year next year. One more match, the I-10 rivalry against UTEP. Does the placement worry you now because you aren't in the NCAA tournament? Yeah, it's a little difficult maybe to get motivated at this point, but it's a rivalry match. Yeah. That makes it a little bit easier. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people don't understand, you know, we schedule matches like this around Thanksgiving time so that uh, typically when we're in the NCAA tournament, we won't have to sit for two weeks. And uh, obviously that isn't the case this year, but uh, to go out with a rivalry match, I think uh, go beat a team on their home court. That's something we want to get done. The Aggie Volleyball team will cap off their season with the I-10 rivalry match on Friday in El Paso. Log on to nmstatesports.com to follow your Aggies in their final match of the season. Coach, best of luck. Thanks, Adam. After the break, we'll sit down with Associate Head Women's Basketball Coach Tamara Inouye to preview her team's Thanksgiving Classic this weekend. Don't go anywhere. That's next on New Mexico State Sports Weekly. The Aggie women's basketball team could call themselves the Road Warriors so far this season. New Mexico State has three games under their belt, and all three have been on the road. That changes this weekend when the Aggies host their annual Thanksgiving Classic with games against Weber State and Cal State Fullerton in Las Cruces. Here with me now in studio is associate head coach Tamara Inouye. Coach, three games in, three games on the road. How challenging has that been because of the games on the road? Oh yeah, on the road for us has always been a challenge and you know, hitting these three, it was very tough games. Um, it's been good for our kids though with a new team, so uh, we got a lot to learn. Where do you feel like your team is at three games in? I think like we're, <laughs> we're feeling our shape, like as far as fitness goes, um, mm -hmm. just as far as finishing games, finishing plays, that's been a struggle for us. And um, I think being on the road, just kind of having things against us, you know, not having a home crowd ha has taken a toll on our kids. Uh, it's been really good. I think we're learning a lot from it. I think that they're, they're understanding, you know, the fight and, and where we are right now. So, I mean, that's a positive it. And coming home and being in front of our home crowd now, I mean, we're excited. We're very excited about it. One of the areas you wanted to improve on this year was defense. Yep. Have you seen improvements in that area? There is improvements on defense. That is something that we only talk about. Um, it is getting better. You know, it is getting better containment as far as holding them to what we need to hold them to. Um, Always need to improve and get better at it. Spurts again, we're in spurts right now. Um, the young ones, that, the new ones coming in are understanding that as well. The old ones are really stepping up to that challenge. How much of this is the players just buying into your system? You know, it, it, takes, it takes a while for them to buy in. Um, the, like I said, from last year's team, like our young ones coming up, they understand what we're, what we're demanding of them. Mm -hmm. And then the freshmen and, and, and our junior college transfers have, have come in open-minded and willing to learn. It's been great. One of those JUCO transfers, Shanice Davis, has been very good yep. offensively. What has made her so good so far? You know, she's just solid. Like, she doesn't get razzled. She's a competitor, first and foremost, and hates to lose. Mm -hmm. And that right there, with that type of attitude, she's going to be great for us. And she has been. I mean, she has been our most consistent player out there and keeps our team together. And you need that from a point guard. If a point guard is not together, then it's really hard to keep our team out there. Which other players have impressed you so far? Um, so far right now, it's been Shanice Davis, who's really just kind of been the one showing up. Uh, Brianna Freeman has come in and has done a good job for us. She's staying solid. You know, Tyler Ellis is our leading rebounder right now, and she's come in um, just being ready to go. You know, we'd like to see, a, you know, Sasha Weber has been kind of struggling out of foul trouble, but, you know, watch her. She's, she's a great player, mm -hmm. you know, very smart. And then um, Abby Scott. Abby Scott needs to find her consistency still, but... You know, it's in her. They're, they're working hard. It just has to, they, she ha they have to have that game. Um, Raya Mack, same thing. She's, she's, she's getting there. 
your last game at Sacramento State, you faced a really tough style, up and down, shoot a lot of threes. How tough was it playing against that style? You know, it, it, was, it was fun. It was fun. It was, it, um, the kids got a lot of quick shots. You know, they, they needed to realize, and as we, were, we only had a day to prepare, and they needed to realize a smart shot from a quick shot. And uh, the first half, I thought we did a good job doing that. The second half, you know, Sacramento State did a good job of just forcing us into really, really quick shots. You're so open mm -hmm. when you're down there. You're like, you think you're so open, but they, if they, you learn how to reverse a little bit, you get them tired. But um, I think we learned a lot just as far as rebounding and everything goes from there. We hope to see you at the Pan American Center Friday and Saturday for the Hotel and Canto Thanksgiving Classic when your Aggies take on Weaver State and Cal State Fullerton. Coach, good luck this weekend. Thank you. Season tickets for men's and women's basketball are now on sale. To be part of the excitement, call the Aggie Ticket Office at 575-646-1420. You can also get your tickets online at nmstatesports.com or at ticketmaster.com. If you missed any part of today's show, you can check us out on YouTube and also be sure to stay up to speed on social media by liking New Mexico State Athletics on Facebook and following us on Twitter. That will do it for this week's installment of New Mexico State Sports Weekly. I'm Adam Young saying thank you for watching and go Aggies.